Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to do my prayer request video, but if you're wondering why I'm sitting here, I decided we'd start it here because I was typing up some things and I just hit the record button. Got our talks for the prayer request, but some of the prayer requests on here the Lord put on my heart. Why don't I just, we do a, when's the last time we did a walk and talk? I know I shake a little bit, so please forgive me. I thank the brethren, brother in Christ that gave me the stick. Uh, but we're going to walk around with my camera handheld camera and I'm going to show you some of the projects that God has me doing around here the physical projects and um, just share with you that way so we're going to do a little bit of a walk and talk and then we're going to wrap it up with the prayer request for this month okay? and then for the brethren okay? so I wanted to start it here but we're going to walk through and I'm going to show you some of the projects that I've done some of the prayer requests that were on my uh, prayer request for the previous months, uh, how the wood stove's going, the, the area there, the tile. I want to show you the tile. I want to show you the wood, the brand new wood that got put on the house from the old drywall wood is gone. And then some projects that I want some prayer requests on and some projects I'm going to be working with my hands to keep me busy and keep me out of trouble. Uh, good work always keeps you out of trouble. Um, I don't know if there's a glare from the window because I had the window. I like the window open when I'm doing my Bible studies and be able to look outside. Uh, it's supposed to, that's why I have my hat on, because I've been outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. And one of the prayer requests real quick is I'm fighting, uh, I, I got locked out of my PayPal account. So real quick, I'll do this now. Brother, sister in Christ that I've been helping out and the donations and everything. Um, and even buying, like even the offer to buy Bibles. Everything got, is being put on hold temporarily because I'm locked out of my PayPal account. And um, that's what I predominantly use because it's, it's safe and secure. It's what I predominantly use to buy things, whether I'm buying stuff on Amazon, uh, church Bible publishers, gospel tracts, um, you know, buying stuff. Uh, I have enough uh, printer, ink, and uh, paper and stuff like that, things for the house um, when I do stuff online. Um, so please understand I'm not, I didn't turn my back on anybody and I don't think everybody's lost. Therefore, I'm not helping out anybody. Everything got put on fro got put on freeze this month. So I'm struggling with that right now. So that's a big prayer request to be able to get back on my PayPal account, to be able to get back to doing some donations and um, being able to help out brethren with Bibles. I love buying King James Bibles for brethren, especially like I said, these. When you have a brother in Christ that's sincere, they love the word of God, brother or sister in Christ, and they either have a really junky Bible or they don't have a King James Bible, I love buying King James Bibles for uh, the brethren. Uh, some uh, teaching materials too sometimes for some of the brethren who really want to get into doing Bible studies for their, for their own. Because um, there's a lot of fighting going on, which will be in the prayer request as it comes on. A lot of fighting in the body of Christ. Fighting over stuff that's not worth fighting over and being distracted from the good fights with just drama and everything. But we started here. I'm a little bit out of breath because I've been, like, so been running all over the house. And I'm going to show you some of the projects that I'll be doing but we're going to get up. I'm going to show you the project in the kitchen, and that's where we're going to be heading. So I'll see you there in just a second. Okay, brother, and sister in Christ, uh, down here is the tile and everything that I had worked on. Uh, pellet stove used to be here. Now I'm trying to save up for a wood stove. So let me see if we can turn the camera around. Now, from right here... From this distance, you really can't see much difference in the tile, but the, the tile pieces that were replaced are the darker ones. And I had the whole, there was two holes heading outside the house. We'll look at them when we get outside. But basically, the pellet stove was heavy and the piping goes out. It blows everything outside the house. It doesn't go through the roof. But I will be end up getting a roof hole there. But the tile looks great. They were able to make it work the way it was. And this will serve its purpose. Some leftover pieces <laughs> that I have to get out of here from the wood stove. But we're able to get the wood stove out. So this got paid for. Praise the Lord. It's done. I don't know how to tile, but some people do. Um, so that was that was done. There's Victoria. Jumping up and down. Um, Prayer, so a prayer for that. I still need to start saving up, and my funds kind of got ran dry on the wood stove option to do a wood stove. I'm still going to do a wood stove, but the funding for the wood stove kind of got drained, and I'll show you why. Um, but someone called requesting some eggs, so I almost got three dozen eggs to give out. Uh, I have a little jar. Oh, I was going to show you this. Right here, 
I always have to clean them, so I don't know if it's going to show up since this is a... There you go. You can see some of the dirt. Uh, you know, I, I call it dirt, but it's something else. Um, but I have to clean them. And I clean them, and I put them in old cartons, and I give them out, and I also take cartons in for donations. So that was a project that was I couldn't do that I had to have done recently, and they just got it finished. One of the projects I want to do, you can see the gate right there, is I want to figure out how to turn this into a sliding door, just this section right here, so I can step down where you see those yellow uh, dandelions. I want to be able to step down there to go to the backyard. I'm getting tired of walking through chicken poop to the chicken coop to get to the backyard to the garden. So this is one of those things that it's on hold, because it's going to cost money, and I need someone who knows what they're doing to figure out something. If you guys have any ideas, I'm trying to... That's zoomed out all the way. It's basically these two sections of uh, fiberglass that's for this wind breaker that it blocks the wind. Which is great. I like it. But I want to figure out some way to turn them sideways and make them slide left or right so I can have steps and just have an opening where I can open it up myself and walk down to the garden. So this was one of the projects that I got to do this summer. But I want to do. It's not a need. It's a want. One of the needs is I got to pressure wash this deck and it needs another coat. I need to spray, pressure wash it down, clean it, and um, need to stain the deck again. Okay. Little go so, uh, my uh, above ground pond is starting to get a lot of, uh, we had a lot of moss lately dealing with the house and everything. Uh, my brother, Let's see if we can get Victoria. Victoria! Urgh. Urgh. And there she goes. Um, got a lot of moss problems. You can see the green moss on there. I'm going to have to pressure washer that. Uh, my brother gave me a, uh, bought me a pressure washer. Uh, my, uh, not a brother in Christ, but a brother in the family when he came to visit. Um, I'm still trying to do the uh, chicken feed where you soak it in water and you let it, I um, can't think of the name, but it's supposed to help with uh, bacteria and everything. And it helps the, the food also soak and it gets bigger and the chickens won't eat as much. Mm -hmm. But it also gives vitamins and nutrients in it. And I forgot what it's called, but it's the same thing you do when you're doing um, pickles and uh, olives and stuff like that. But the, the word just eludes me. But uh, the Lord blessed me that right before winter hit, I was able to buy this. And it's a cutter, a tree limb cutter, but also it has a cutter there. Let's see if I can pull the right thing. And it works really well. And I used it off the deck. I'm not going to go back up there. But off the deck, you had some of those bushes. They'll get so tall, they start blocking your view, my view and everything. And it's such a blessing to be able to cut those. But the other thing I use it for is these guys right here. That I haven't hit up yet. But I don't know if you can make them out. But there's one right here. It's a blackberry bush poking through everything. And they'll just, they'll just be a stem that pokes through. And I'll, I can try to kill them from the roots. But the best thing I've been able to do without having to wrestle and fight with them too much. Is just clip them as far down as I can to the ground. Just clip them. They'll grow this much. Oh, that's the, uh, the birds going crazy. But here's one close up. That's really close. But they get pretty big and I've got to clip them down. So that's what I'll be doing. So the other project in here, real quick, is these rocks. I'm going to try to take out all the rocks and put dirt in here. And I'm going to try to put something that will grow and hold this steady. Um, but i got to put a gate here. And I don't know if you noticed up here. Hopefully I'm not jumping around too much. But this is my makeshift gate. I have a fold-out table that I will... Open like that to keep the chickens from going up on the deck. And that's my little gate that keeps them from going up. But eventually, i got to pressure wash this because they've kicked dirt up. They'll get into these rocks and they'll start doing their dust baths. And they'll kick dirt up on the walls and everything. So what I want to do is put a gate here. And uh, I have to measure it and make, uh, you know, it's, it's not a regular size gate. I have to make my own gate. It's got the hinges there still left over from a long time ago. But i got to put a gate here so the chickens can't come in. So that's a project that I will be working on. All right. um, 
So I need prayer. I need prayer for all these projects because I want to be able to do a lot of it by hand to keep me busy. And people might ask, why do you have this up like this? It's a makeshift. So when I put this here, there's one or two chickens that know how to hop and, and use the fence to hop and, and flap up to where they can hop out. And I don't want them getting out until I tell them they can get out. So, wow. Victoria took off up the driveway. But the chickens are doing good, Brothers of Christ. Thank you, thank you for praying for the chickens. Uh, got their own water out here, a little bucket to give them some food out here. And I sprinkle some of the wet food. You can see a little bit of wet food out here so they can. Hey, the sun's coming out. Praise the Lord. That's them. They're doing good. Got a new rooster. They used to have that silver one, but now I've got the white one. Let's see, right there. He's running. He's got the big fin on his head. But the chickens are doing good. I have, um, what's the type of bird? Uh, anyway, my brain freezes sometimes. But I had to put things like that guy out here. <laughs> and then have another one over here that I have set in here because there are certain birds that are taking over everything and they're eating all the chicken feed. I'm try doves, thank you. Doves, thank you, Lord. Um, all these different types of doves are coming in here and they're coming in like 20, 30 at a time and they're just taking over and they're scaring the chickens away because they're what I've learned is they're the bullies of the bird world out here. I mean, you've got hawks, you've got turkey vultures, and you've got uh, those stellar jays that have the mohawks. But the bullies out here that really tend to bully everybody is the the doves. Uh, the doves will come out here in a whole herd and they'll take over this. So right now my project out here, which I'm going to try to get done today and tomorrow, is I've got to shovel everything out and replace it with good uh, dry bark. And then you'll see the white or the cedar chippings i gotta come in here let's jump down here for a second and say hello to these guys i had four baby chicks and now they're getting bigger and bigger and they're getting to the size where we might have to be able to let them out how you guys doing they always look beautiful when they're young like really newborn right out of the egg hatched out of the egg but then they go through a phase where they look all you know matty and like dirty when they're not dirty it's just the feathers are growing in and the uh fuzz is is getting out you know they're getting rid of the fuzz oops that's my knees popping so do a little maintenance under there but the big thing is i gotta get all the wood chips out of here automatic water praise the lord and um the regular dry food that i try to leave some dry food for them but i gotta get in here and i've got to clean all this out oh hey I was going to open it up to see if we had any eggs to show the eggs, but now I don't want to bother them. But you see them, there's three of them. They're giving me eggs. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I got to go through here and I got to pressure wash through this thing today or tomorrow, but I got to get all this stuff out and I'm going to see if I can't pressure wash it or dust as best I can um, and get them fresh stuff. If I leave this stuff in for too long, I think I might have this time. It'll start getting those little mites and stuff that live in the, the uh how do you say it the poop bird poop and i I put fresh on fresh on and when it gets close like maybe it could get a little bit closer but a little bit closer to the sticks that they sleep on i got to take the whole thing out and start at the bottom and just do a thin layer and then a thin layer and, th and you're just building it up and that stuff makes good uh, mulch for the garden so we will be transferring it over to the garden Oh, we're going to walk back here for a second. I could leave it in or edit it out, but I couldn't find Victoria to let her out, so let her follow us. Victoria? You coming? You coming? Victoria? Victoria, she thinks I'm coming out here. I'm not coming out here. Oops. Come on. All right. You're just going to have to wait then. Are you coming? Are you coming? All right. 
But, uh, oh, while we're here, look at these walls. My brother helped me pressure wash these walls. And we were able to pressure wash them. And then the house looks brand new. Looks amazing. We're able to make it look pretty good. And I want to get the whole house looking like this, which I will eventually. But... They're still shy, but it looks amazing. There's the two holes we had plugged, a little white cap down there and then the metal cap. We had plugged those holes from the uh, pellet stove. So that got done, the tile got done, praise the Lord. So that step's done. Now, if you can see a lot of the green, I had pressure washed this where it looked brand new and then within like a week, it looks all green again because we just had rain for a while. This was a investment, a little bit costly, you say, well, what is that? It's a repeating mouse trap. I catch rats and mice in there a lot. And it drops them down into the bottom. And then the pan, the, the, the lever, as it falls down, it'll fall down. And then it comes back up and clicks. And they run to the food, start chewing on the food. They end up hitting the button that drops it down and drops the rat or the mouse down to the bottom part. And they, I just round them up from the bottom part. And it just repeats. It, it keeps resetting itself, so you never have to worry about it not working. It's doing good. Um, so, let's look at the garden. Well, let's look at this real quick. The part I want to try to make, I don't know if I can get it on here. Because the sun's coming out. But uh, I can't get back here. I'm going to try to. But if you look at that, it's all green. The wall itself is green. But when we got done with the pressure washer, and you can see some of the uh, this stuff right here. Uh, anytime there's a little bit of dirt, this fungus will st or this moss will start grabbing it and start growing really big. But as you can see, get here we get a lot of uh, spider webs, and uh, our banana slugs will come up and do circles and leave poop on the wall. <laughs> so. Um, that's what that'll be going on. But right now what I had done out here, I don't know if you can see it, but that white beam that goes all the way up to the top there, the corner, and then all the way down here, there's two beams that I had to have replaced. And when they went to replace it, when they connected there, it was all dry rotted and falling apart at the touch. And underneath, on this side, he had to fix some things underneath that weren't doing so well. So when it seemed to be a, a simple project, it ended up becoming a little bit tougher project and more costly project. But that's where the dry rot was. And the Lord blessed me with us being able to get that done. And that kind of killed, wiped out a lot of my um, savings. This, between this and the tile, wiped out a lot of my savings because uh, they had to do a terrace that what they built over this tank. It's an old water tank, outdoor water tank, and a pressure tank over there. So they did their best not to do much damage to the garden because there's my out of control herb garden that lasts every year. <laughs> I'd have to trim it back. But um, uh, there's the fence. We'll do look at it from this way. Just the project, Brothers of Christ, and he prayed for. Oops, there's a garden snake. Those guys are good guys. They eat bugs and whatnot. Um, but right there, you can see where the water comes down off the roof, the gutter. But I want a little sliding door right there that I can build some steps right there. And you just walk down here and you walk across over here and you get into the garden. You don't have to walk through the chicken coop or deal with the chicken stuff. But I got my tomatoes right there. They're looking okay, but we had a cold front and it killed some of my plants, and I'm having to start all over. So, you see these two in cups, they're my zucchini. I have to start new ones, because I had ones, when you start them from seed, they take a while. And got them in there, and they, uh, we had a cold front where we had some ice and storm a few weeks ago, like two to three weeks ago, and it killed those plants. They couldn't survive with the temperature. So, now I have to replant those. The onions seem to survive, and they're doing just fine. I've got tons of onions. All the small stuff you see in the small things are small onions. All over, they're doing great. This plant is one of the plants that you can do, asparagus, that comes back every year. And I'm starting to get it going. And right now, see if I can count. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 stalks. I call this a stalk right here. And technically you could cut it and eat this before it gets to being like this. But when you first put it in, it usually takes two to three years to get where this, I want this whole thing growing nothing but stalks so I can start cutting them and let some survive and some I eat. But this is one of those plants that comes back every year. I don't have to replant it, which is great. I'm always dealing with somebody trying to dig. You can see right there, someone's been digging, digging a hole in my garden. Okay, brushless spouts are looking good. The cold weather didn't kill, they didn't really affect them too much. These are my turnips. Let's see if we can see color. But you can see the color right there, the turnips. They'll get really big, but you don't want them to get too big. Like this one's good to pull right now, maybe. As big as that is, I think it's getting big enough to pull in and start eating. My potatoes, praise the Lord, potatoes. Got potatoes growing in there, and I'm going to start filling that in as it gets higher. But this is potatoes growing right here. Strawberries are right here. This is one of the wood boards left over from their work that they were doing. Um, so potatoes are in one of these, but I, then I forgot I put some kind of new plant in there last year, and it's come back, and I forgot what it's called. But um, it's a different type of um, potato, but it's kind of like a root. And I just can't think of the name. But uh, I got uh, lettuce. I got green lettuce here. I got the red lettuce right there. This didn't do so well, so I don't know if I'm going to have to replant these. But these were corn. Corn. But if you look at them, they, did, they got damaged a lot when we had the frost come through. Because corn really needs good warmth and planted at the right time. And we planted, I planted it when it got super warm, got really hot. We got up to 100 degrees on the deck. Uh, a couple more of uh, tomato plants that I'm going to put in right here for tomatoes. But these always look beautiful. Just so you know, if you don't know anything about the um, strawberries, at the end of the year, ooh, at the end of the year, they'll look like they're dying. And they'll just look horrible, like they're just sickly and half of it's dead and everything. That's what it normally does every year. And what you got to do is you got to get in here. There's still some left over. But you grab the, the stuff that dries out and looks like it's dying. And you clean it out. And then all this new growth will come in. And it looks like so healthy and so green. You can see the white, the yellow flower. Or no, I'm sorry, white with yellow in the center. But there's white flowers. I'll get closer. They'll start growing strawberries. Praise the Lord. And they just look so good and healthy. So I've got strawberries everywhere. These were my first batch, just trying them out. Then I got, I made, I let the, I'm trying to let the strawberries take over this whole thing so I can move those other strawberries. And then I wanted some filler in for my plums. And I put strawberries down here and they're growing out here. And I let them grow out on the rocks because it's strawberries. You want strawberries? As long as they're not all the way out here where I'm walking with Victoria. But my plum tree, we had to trim it down again this year because I had it just put these in recently. These are a recent thing I put in last year. And you got to trim them, uh, prune them a couple years to get them to grow the way you want them to grow. And then that'll work. So uh, more onions. Because I, I always get tons and tons of onions every year. But my zucchini, not zucchini, zucchini's over there. Squash, my quick neck squash died on me. So I had to buy a couple more to start out again because, like I said, we had that frost come through and they died. Uh, it got too cold out here. But one of the big blessings, I thank those for praying for the garden and I'm praying for it. That is a green or red, it depends on, because I got uh, cuttings, a uh, grape. It's a grapevine. They're growing. I pl planted them last year. They grew just a tad bit, but not much. But this year they're growing. Once they get tall enough to grab that fence right there the, the, to use it as a vine. I mean, the vine grows, starts interweaving along that. It'll just start going crazy once I let it connect. But it's got to start growing tall enough to connect to the vine. So I got four of those going, which is such a blessing. This is my peach tree. And what's happening this year, we trimmed it back pretty good this year. But then all of a sudden, it started getting this. I don't know if you can see that. But the leaves are all getting all messed up and and like they get boils on it you can see this right here like that's supposed to be a leaf but it's all boiling and everything and it's not doing so good i gotta spray it with some stuff to help it 
But it was doing good because we're getting peaches right there. But these leaves, getting boils on it. So I'm, I'm, that really needs prayer. My trees need prayer this year. They're going to be great next year, but we had to prune them back a lot this year. And this year, the leaves are starting to look like that, which is bad. Either insects are getting to it, or it's got some kind of disease. So I need to spray it. But there's still a lot of healthy leaves on it. So, and like I said, I have uh, strawberries down there at the bottom. But, uh, broccoli! We got broccoli. And you can see holes in this. So those, uh, I've been trying to keep the uh, slugs, the banana slugs are the biggest things to keep out of here. Um, cauliflower. So two cauliflower, there's cabbage right here. They're going to get growing. And like I said, I did the whole outside with uh, onions. Just tons of onions. So I got a spot here that I have to decide what to grow. Because I tried to do some green bell peppers. But we had that cold front. So the bell peppers didn't survive. The, zuc uh, the, the zucchini over here didn't survive. I had to replace those. And the um, quick, nuts, quick neck squash didn't survive. And uh, I don't think those corn's going to do any good. I got to redo some of this. Victoria. Stop it. Stop it. But there's a lot of projects to do. And this is left over. Like I said, he had to pull out a lot of stuff. The stuff was uh, dry rotting. That's what the wood was looking like up there. Really, really bad. Falling apart. Just, you see, like dirt. Falling apart like dirt. So the wood up there was really bad. And I had to make a pray about it. And had to make a decision to get... Oh, there's a big piece right there. Had to have this done before the wood stove so we will get the wood stove eventually i just keep help pray brother sister christ for the wood stove um let's see if we can get the camera turned around and then talk with the stable camera okay just a few more things to wrap this up uh prayer for my physical health <coughs> and then i cough um very Prayer for my physical health. Um, oh, Brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, Victoria, my mentor Schnauzer, just throwing a few more things, prayer requests up there, and then I, I'd like for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to put prayer requests in the uh, comment section. But Victoria had to go in because she's got that thing growing on her side of her face again, and it was like it was a cyst of some kind. And she's getting old, but I had to take her in and get her looked at. But she's been doing a lot better. Her teeth, all the rotten teeth got taken out. She still has a lot of energy, running run everywhere. She's doing good. Uh, me st standing. Uh, it's raining. It started to sprinkle a little bit. Uh, hopefully, I was hoping to get some of that work done outside, but we'll see. Um, but pray for my health physical health. Um, pray that God will keep me on the straight and narrow. I need good prayer for straight and narrow, and I pray for the brethren for straight and narrow. I pray for the brethren for their health, physical health, and their spiritual health. Uh, spiritual health, straight and narrow. Okay. Romans 8, 4 says that the righteous of the law might be filled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You want true life and true peace? What real living is? Um, you walk after the capital S spirit. You do your best to hide God's word in your heart and live the word of God. Okay? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Brothers is Christ, for thy pleasure they are and created. Okay? For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Jesus Christ created all things. God the Father, through Jesus Christ, created all things. And we were created to please God. Okay? Help us to stay on the straight and narrow. Help us, like I said, that prayer to keep pleasing God at every turn. Right? And when we fail the Lord, what does the Bible say? says that he must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. If any man come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. 
Help us to drop our pride, um, our egos, and repent when we're wrong. Admit when we're wrong and repent. Not just say I'm wrong, but turn from that wickedness. Because I've come across a lot of people, brothers of Christ, that say that, yeah, I did wrong, but they don't turn from it and they make the same mistake over and over and over and over. Why? Because they're not turning from it. Okay, repent, forsake, and get back to your walk with the Lord. That's a prayer request that I have for me and that I pray for you, brothers and sisters of Christ. Stay on the straight and narrow. Okay? No matter what bad things happen to you in your life, um, don't get distracted. And that'd be the next prayer request I have. Pray that I, I and we, the body of Christ, do not get distracted by the flesh. We don't get distracted by the world, what's going on in the world. Okay? It says here, 1 Peter 4.15 says, But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Don't get distracted by the flesh. Don't start resurrecting the old man. Don't start giving in to temptation and sinning. And also a busy man in other men's matters. Uh, don't get distracted by what's going on in the world. Okay? What everyone else is doing. Focus solely on you, and that's why I need prayer requests to focus on my walk with the Lord and living for the Lord and continue to read God's Word, study God's Word, and live God's Word and be an encouragement to the brethren. And I pray for you, brothers of Christ, that you can be an encouragement to me. Now, in 2 Timothy 2.4 we read, No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Okay? The affairs of this life. Right? One of the biggest distractions going on right now is things that are happening overseas. I'm in, in the U.S., but maybe it's happening near you. But there's times that stuff will happen that will affect you. Don't get me wrong, but brothers and sisters in Christ, I think one of the biggest distractions I see in the body of Christ today is you're getting so fixated on the world. And uh, sin is a big one um, as, as far as the flesh distraction. And then when it comes to the world being a distraction, one of the biggest distractions I see among the body of Christ is there's this big push that you no longer look for Jesus Christ. There's brethren that have turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ. They once believed it with the life that they were living, and they've turned their back on it. And now what are they doing? They're getting you distracted by what's going on in the world, and they get you to look for the Antichrist. They get you to look for the Mark of the Beast system, the One World Order. Okay, there were signs given to us by the Bible saying that the end will come after these signs. I understand that. But we're supposed to be looking for Jesus Christ to come back. We're not supposed to be looking for the Antichrist. We're not supposed to be looking for the mark of the beast. We're not supposed to be looking for the one world order. We can see signs of the one world order coming together. We can see signs of the mark of the beast system technology is here today. And... Um, we can see the signs that the world's coming together to worship a false Jesus. We can see that, which will be an antichrist. But don't get so distracted that you're not living for the Lord every day. Okay? You're getting distracted. That's one of the biggest distractions I see. Uh, one of the things is news media. Um, uh, be careful. Be I, I'm a little weary of... of um, I, I tell, tell the brethren, help pray for me, that you, know, you just spend maybe 30 minutes every morning. Okay, 30 minutes every morning looking at the news, see what's going on, okay, I'm good. Or 30 minutes in the evening, you know, seeing what's going on in the world, okay, well, the Lord said it would happen and everything, okay, I'm good. Don't get so stuck on having to know what's going on everywhere in the world and every little thing, and every, I gotta know everything, and you get so into news, the world, the world, the world, it pulls you away from this. Okay. It pulls you away from looking for Jesus Christ. You get distracted. You take your... Remember with G, uh, Peter walking on water. What happened? He took his eyes off Jesus Christ and put it on the world, the water, the world. And the world's falling apart. The world's chaos. It's just evil and wickedness. And what happened to P uh, Peter? He started to sink into that world, into that wickedness. What happens when you take your eyes off Jesus Christ and you put it on the world? Just like when you're driving, you tend to go where you spend most of your time looking. If you spend most of your time looking at what's going on in the world, you're going to start going that direction. And you're going to start becoming worldly. And you're going to get distracted from the things that matter. So I, one of the prayer requests is that for me is that for distractions. 
that we don't get distracted. There's work to be done. We've got to continue living for the Lord in these last days, and we've got to continue doing the work of the Lord. Okay? I think I'm going to sneeze. Phew. Sorry. But just wanted to throw that out there. That's a prayer request. Another prayer request is patience. Right? There's a lot of Bible verses on patience. Rest in the Lord. It's Psalms 37, 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. And you can keep reading that, but that's the important part. Rest in the Lord and patiently wait for Him. I have to pray for patience all the time. You know what you can do while you're patiently waiting on the Lord? Read His Word. Are you starting your day with God's Word and ending your day with God's Word? Are you praying? Okay, pray without ceasing. We read a lot of those verses at the beginning. Pray, pray, pray. Pray without ceasing. Okay, make your request known unto God. Uh, while you're patiently waiting on the Lord, and if you're going through some tough times, and God's like, you got to be patient. you got to be patient. So while you're being patient, get back to reading the Word of God. Get back into prayer. Get back to singing hymns. Get back to good fellowship with brethren. Okay, fellowship today is hard to find. It is so hard to find. Uh, brethren lately seem to be bickering and fighting over, over a lot of things. Some things... Don't get me wrong, there's sometimes I've lost fellowship with brethren because I stood for the word of God, absolute truth, absolutely. But I'll give you a good example of, of what's not justified to break fellowship. Um, what is it, the 24 elders in Revelation. My, it's just a theory because it doesn't tell us who the 24 elders are. It doesn't. So I will not come out and say this is absolute truth. And if you don't believe it, then you're ignorant of scripture and I can't fellowship with you. It's stupid to break fellowship over something that's just a theory. My theory is, is the Bible teaches that there's 24 national boundaries. Okay, 12 on the Gentile side, 12 on the Jews side. That makes 24. And the way the Bible teaches, you have a captain over 10s, captain over 50s, captains over 100s. You always have one person in charge, you don't have two people in charge. So why would you have two uh, elders representing the same group? Like I said, it's just my theory, though. And my theory is, is that it's 24 elders are one from each of the uh, national boundaries that God set. There's 24 national boundaries. That's just my theory. I have another brother in Christ who his theory is, is it's two from each of the 12 uh, national boundaries just on the Gentile side. The Jews got kicked out just on the Gentile side. And it's like, that's his theory. And I'm like, I don't agree with this theory, but I can't tell him he's 100% wrong, and I can't say I'm 100% right, because the Bible doesn't tell us who the 24 elders are. So what happens? There's brethren that broke fellowship with people over that. Or a theory. Okay? There's things in the Bible that I have to stand firm to. I have to stand firm that this is God's perfect written word. The King James Bible, whether you say authorized version, King James Version, 1611, uh, Holy Bible, whatever. The King James Bible is where you find God's perfect written word. That's worth fighting over. Okay. Uh, the true plan of salvation, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. That's worth fighting for the gospel, the true plan of salvation found in the King James Bible. The major doctrines, eternal security, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ, which includes the imminent return of Jesus Christ as far as living your life like Jesus could come back any day now. That's how you're supposed to live because you don't know the exact day he's coming back. So you, and I've already done studies on this, you are taught to live every day for Jesus Christ. He could come back today. What are you going to get done for him today? The things you're doing right now, is he happy with how you're doing things? There's some brethren that have turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ because the way they're living and how they're treating the brethren is 100% wrong, and they know it. But who cares? Jesus isn't coming back today. Anyway, there's some things that are worth standing for and worth fighting for. Okay? Uh, dispensational teaching. Okay, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Those are things worth fighting for. And there's some things that will cause division. True, Absolute truth will divide. And there will be brethren that fall away. And you have to break fellowship with them. But lately I've been finding that there's brethren breaking fellowship that's not, it's not justified. It's not justified. There's a disagreement. Okay, you disagree, disagree. 
I don't agree with the agree to disagree, but I'm talking about when it comes to theories. People breaking fellowship over theories. Uh, we started a, a series about words to no profit. Okay, people trying to use words as justifications to start fights and arguments, and they're not even fighting for the word property properly. And they're making a big stink over something that's not a big stink. They're just they're creating drama and fight and division. It's there. But um, but patience. Uh, we gotta pray for patience. But one thing that helps you the patience was that we talk about is good fellowship. Brothers and sisters Christ, when you get good brothers and sisters from Christ, hold on to them. Okay? And remember that they're not gonna be perfect. They're not going to be perfect. They're going to make mistakes. Uh, you need to have grace. You need to have charity. That's what true charity is. It's self-sacrifice. Okay? Humble yourself and understand that uh, I'm not perfect either. You need to have grace. True grace. I hate to say it like this, but how many times have you heard someone stand up there behind a camera and say, I had way too much grace for that man or that woman? That's someone who doesn't know what word grace is anymore. There's no such thing as too much grace. How many of you like to have Jesus sit there and say, Your name, brother, says Christ, said, I had way too much grace for you? He would never say it. Why are we saying that? That defeats the whole purpose of what grace is. Uh, patience. I've had too much patience. Uh, I gave that person way too much leeway. Absolutely. He's lost my trust. He or she has lost my trust. And you have to earn it back. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can lose. And uh, I gave that person way too many chances to repent. Or that it's like, uh, but it's still grace. You have grace. You find some brothers and sisters in Christ that they will help you through the, the when it's time to be patient. Okay, patient in tribulation. One of the verses I have in here talks about uh, patience and tribulation. When you're going through hard times, a good way to help with you having patience is having a brother or sister in Christ that can be there with you through that time period. Through that hard time. Through the tribulation, through the hard time, you're being tempted. You can go talk to a brother and sister in Christ when you're being tempted. Okay? To resurrect the old man, um, being tempted with sin. But having brethren is a good thing, and we need to pray for that. We need to pray hardcore for two, good, true fellowship among the brethren again. And and these people, when things are coming in to try to cause division and so don't get me wrong. Standing for, because someone will try to bring this back on me. Standing for what the Bible teaches, what true liberty is, is worth fighting for. Okay? Uh, like I said, the major doctrines, instruction, righteousness, fighting for God's word, absolutely, that can be found in the King James Bible for English speaking people. Yes, it's worth fighting for. Okay? But there's some things that somebody can be wrong and you need to have patience. Another way of having grace and being humble is saying, okay, I've told the truth to them. I can't tell you, brothers and sisters Christ, how many times I told the truth to a brother or sister in Christ. I'll use an example, the uh, Godhead versus the Trinity. They believe the Godhead of the King James Bible. God in one person, Jesus Christ. But they got mad at me because they felt like I was attacking the real God because I'm against the title Trinity and the description Trinity. It's not in the Bible as a title, and it's not in the Bible as a description. Godhead is the title, and the description is, is uh, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. These three are one. Those are the descriptions that describe what the Godhead is. Jesus is the person singular. God the Father the soul is in him. The Holy Spirit of God and the Spirit of God is in him. And he's the flesh of God. He's the body. Okay. But I tried talking to some brethren, and they were mean to me. They were just mean, like I was attacking God. They were trying. They wanted to defend the Word of God. And I understand that there are brethren that they want to defend the Word of God, and they, they get a, a, a zeal, as the Bible talks about, and they want to be strong for the Lord and fight for the Lord. And they were very mean about it. And I tried my best to have a, I'm supposed to correct a brother with kind and kindness, and meekness. I'm sorry, meekness. Okay, correcting one another in meekness. Okay. And I tried to be nice about it and said, Lord, please help me have patience. I don't want to be, how do you call it, get uh, angry. I don't want to hold a grudge. Just be patient. Be patient. Lord, please give me patience. 
And you know what? It took several months, but several months later, some of those brothers and sisters of Christ came back and talked with me. And said, and you know what? They're like, I'm sorry. I agree with you. I believe what you believe. And I should, I should not have gone off on you like that. And I'm sorry. And we got back to fellowshipping again. Right? you got to be patient. And that's what I'm trying my best to do right now. I have brethren that have turned against me. And I'm trying to be patient. Uh, family members. Okay? you got to be patient. Lost family members. I'm sorry. you got to be patient. Um, you know, uh, neighbors and whatnot. i got one guy up here that one minute, it's, it's hard to tell. One minute he's mad and he's, he's, he's yelling so much. He's like, he's, spit, he's not like spitting in your face, but he's, uh, saliva's flying as he's yelling because he's just angry. And one time he was angry at me. One time, uh, one of my neighbors that are lost, he was angry at him. And he's, he's a loose cannon. And I've got to be patient. Okay, I can't turn around and lose my temper and start treating him the way he's treating me. I gotta be patient. Okay. And then there was a time that I was able to, to talk to him about Jesus Christ's word, and then he turned around and mocked it. And it's like, but there was a door open, and I planted a seed. But you gotta learn to have patience, and that's what I need prayer with. I need prayer, brothers and Christ, to have patience. Okay. There's. Uh, Brother have talked to me, he's like, why aren't you coming out with tons of these videos against this guy? He's turned against you. He stabbed you in the back. Why aren't you making videos against It's like, uh, I'm going to have patience. I'm going to wait. Okay? I'm going to wait and have patience. Uh, well, why aren't you treating this guy bad? He treated you bad. Have patience. Bad things are happening to you. Why aren't you upset with God? Why aren't you yelling at God? Well, first of all, you're not supposed to yell at God. But you need to have patience. Okay. What helps with patience is reading the Word of God, okay. prayer, singing hymns. And the third thing that wraps all the three together is singing hymns with brethren is great. Uh, praying with brethren is great. Uh, reading the Bible with brethren, Bible readings, Bible studies with brethren is great. Being there, I, I, I'm, bad things are happening to me and I'm just frustrated. You know what? I remember that, I'm just using an example. What if there was a brother in Christ that lived like 20 minutes away, he's rebuilding his fence. I can go help him out for a while. Take a break, get away from what's bothering me, and have patience that God will get it to work out, and I'll go help that brother in Christ out. You know, let me go help, you know, food, raiment, with some of the brethren and everything. But that's what God has it set up for. That'll help us with patience, and I need help with patience. Mm -hmm. Since I first got saved to now, I've seen brethren in fellowship. I've seen brethren come and go. And I still pray for a lot of brethren that I once talked to. There were some false converts that came and gone, but there are some that I still believe to this day are saved, and I miss them. I miss them. They've gotten mad at me. There's times I've screwed up. I need to throw that out there because I want you to understand I'm not acting like I did nothing wrong and everybody else does everything wrong. I've screwed up before and I had to apologize. And some brethren forgive me when I screw up. Some brethren have a hard time forgiving. And they don't forgive and they break fellowship with you and leave. It's like, I'm like, Lord, what can I say, Lord? I screwed up. I did wrong. I wish they had grace, true grace. I wish they had true charity, uh, true love for their brother in Christ, talk about me, but I screwed up. You know, If you live by the flesh, you shall die. Uh, there is a cost to sin. There is a cost to making mistakes. People think that the ultimate cost I'm freed from, and if you're truly saved and born again, you're not going to hell, and then the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. But there's still some cost to sin. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is the eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The gift of God. Uh, we still have to answer at the judgment seat of Christ for our life as a Christian. Yeah. Didn't mean to go off too much on it, but I really wanted to ha hammer that part about patience. One thing that really helps us with patience and not to get distracted and to stay on the straight and narrow, those three things that I was asking for prayer from, you know, it really helps out a lot. Good fellowship. Prayer, actually reading the Word of God, prayer, uh, singing hymns, those are great individually, but as a body of Christ, brothers of Christ, what really helps is fellowship. Fellowship's kind of hard to find these days. So those three things I really need prayer on. 
Okay. And then we talked in that really quick walk around video. Uh, I know it was shaking a lot, but uh, the garden, need prayer for the garden and show some of the things in the garden, had things die, had to replace things, had some disease attacking my uh, peach tree. Okay. The chicken coop, I've got to clean out the chicken coop and I've got chickens and I've always got predators um, fighting the rats and the mouse on the chicken coop. I showed in the video just a quick look of the repeating mouse trap that I bought. Um, and then um, sometimes, because uh, I don't have that chicken coop really like nothing can get in and nothing can get out. So every once in a while uh, if I find out that I'm starting to get... Uh, what's it called, weasels can get in there and start killing the chickens too. So I'm always fighting that. So I always need prayer for the chickens. And remember, like I said before, the chickens give me food, the garden gives me food, and the wood stove, which will be the third prayer as far as wants around here, gives me heat. And um, I, do def I do want heat. <laughs> or to do, I do, I do want heat. Okay. The construction work, just real quick again, the construction work on the tile got finished, paid for, praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Sister Christ, for prayer. Uh, they had to redo the wood on the outside. Thank you, God. Uh, thank you, Lord. And thank you, Brother Sister Christ, for your prayer for all the construction work. And uh, they're doing construction work on the on Internet still on the neighborhood. I mean, I thought they were done, but I keep seeing the trucks going back and forth, and they're still putting a, a, a wiring in the ground further down. Um, and uh, so... I've been struggling with the internet. Like I said, right now I'm kind of kicked off of uh, PayPal. And I'm trying to, f not kicked off, I'm just, I'm facing a situation on PayPal where you have to have a cell phone. I did have a cell phone, but somehow it got reset, so it's treating this computer like it's a brand new computer. It's never used PayPal before. So it wants me to verify my cell phone, and I don't have a cell phone. And my old cell phone doesn't work anymore because I don't have a cell phone. And I'm trying to, f and then he's like, you have to have a cell phone. And I'm like, it's been so, it's been years, and I'm like, you have to have a cell phone, so now I gotta figure something out. I might have to get a temporary card on my cell phone for like a 30 day card just so I can get the um, my PayPal up and running again. It's, it's, it's retarded that they force you to have a cell phone, but they do. Um, so I need prayer for that to try to see if I can get that back up and running. Um, so I can get back to my donations and helping out what I can. Like I said, I have everything budgeted out. So, Brother and Sister Christ, I thank you for your prayers. Please, please, in the comment section, please put your prayer requests in the comment section. Please. I, I, I love praying for the brothers and sisters of Christ. I love fellowship. I love reading the Word of God with brethren, taking turns reading and listen, listening to people read. And I love talking about the Word of God with the brethren. I love uh, praying with the brethren. I love singing hymns with the brethren. Lately, it's just me, <laughs> just singing by myself. It's been a while since I got to sing hymns with a brother in Christ, but I would love to do that again. I, I love fellowship. I think one of the biggest things is we desperately need in these last days, in these tough days where there's a lot of things out there trying to distract us, uh, whether it be our flesh, sin, temptation, uh, worldly, the way the world's going, worldliness, uh, covetousness, which is idolatry, the brethren falling into covetousness. Um, I need, I need, I have to have. And then... The worst thing they do is that some of them are trying to hide it behind the Word of God when God's not for it. It's just covetousness. You know? You're know, you trying to justify it using the Word of God, but it's just covetousness. Right? And it becomes idolatry. The Brother Christ did a great study on covetousness, which is idolatry. Um, but Brother Jesus Christ, just def desperately keep, us, keep me in your prayers. Keep the body of Christ as a whole in your prayers. Uh, keep and keep each other. Keep yourself in your prayers. Make sure you are praying to the Lord. So I pray to the Lord in all these things. So grace and peace. I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. And I will get back to some of these more studies on words to no profit. And I still have another study over here that's remember me. I remember mentioning this way back when, but I almost forgot about it. But remember me, Hannah. Rachel trusting God. In these last days, we desperately need to trust God. He knows what he's doing. And, and there's some brethren that are just, we got to fight the world, and we got to fight this, and we got to fight that. It's like, God's bringing this about. Do you trust him? To stop whining and complaining and saying, we got to rise up and fight this. 
we need to stand for God in our life and live for God in our life. And whatever consequences happen, you know, suffering, tribulation, suffering, we face it. Try to face it together, but we face it. Okay? So we got some other studies we'll get back to. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.